Welcome, 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 dear all, to twitch.tv slash Winsleydale Cheddar. This is Stammer Stream, manga podcast and speech therapy combined. I'm your stammering host, Winsleydale Cheddar, here alongside your non stammering host, Grail9. Grail, what did you do with Milo? Hey, you know just as well as I do, we maybe should have held our battle for. Co- for supremacy on this podcast somewhere else and not have so many casualties. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you right now uh, since I'm throat sick this week. I'm just going to assume that uh, you've used some sort of a biological weapon on me. <laughs> yeah, if I had, you would be dead. I don't do half-assed biological weapons. Uh, I I just assumed that, that you were going to... Uh just mildly annoy me uh, out of the podcast. Uh, seems if I did that, I would never admit it as a failure of that lethal weapon. Uh, how are you doing, though? Eh, okay, I guess. Getting pissed off at job search. Yeah, I, um, I've read your tweet and I... I keep wondering, how is it possible that uh, that uh, you weren't you weren't a good enough candidate? Uh, given given that, uh, given that, how is it possible that you have a job? Given that your English is so good, um, I, I mean, w- when I first heard you, I um, I I genuinely thought uh, that uh, you were an American. Um, I, I even, I even can't understand uh, Jonah, uh, who says y- you sounded mm, um, thick European to him. Uh, but then again, he's a native, and I'm a shit phonetician. <laughs> well, I would rather not fill this jo- podcast with rants about that stuff. So, how about we move into something that doesn't want to make me spend more money than I should just to calm myself down? Uh, yeah, uh, let's um, let's move to. Well, speaking of job search, let's move on to One Piece. Be- because because each of the Straw Hats have the occupations and um, um, non- none of them. Just drop it. That didn't work. Jobless. I mean, you had it there, but you dropped it. Th- this move was on. this was an Why excellent segue. I will tell you, sir. I will not accept any other. <sighs> Um, any other opinion? Uh, I'm ju- I'm just uh, realizing uh, why you don't think I'm a good ca- uh, I'm a good host. So One Piece, uh, chapter eight hundred seventy one seventy nine. Uh, so Pedro is still dead, and Grail. Now enough. Now that enough time has been dedicated to his sacrifice, I'm actually starting to believe it. So I really need a counterpoint if you'd have one. No, I was the one who said he actually might be dead. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're not gonna get that counterpoint from someone like me. I'm Though not... I will say, called it, Peril Sparrow did lose an arm. Yeah, he, he did. <laughs> His complaint about it is uh, is so uh, is so bloody uh, wonderful. It's it's so Kubo like. <laughs> Uh, this is just going to be Boobo now like. a mild annoyance uh, while I'm I won't be able to enjoy oh, yeah. my uh, oh. usual cup of tea uh, when uh, because my arm's going to melt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well. Uh. Well, at least he's pretty good good about it. He's not going all whiny about oh my arm's gone. He's back in job. He's doing what's asked of him. And hey. He's already catching up to the straw hats by making a mass of candy for a Big Mom to walk on. Uh, true, uh, which is kind, of, which is kind of interesting because this means that uh, Big Mom must must have forgot uh, for- forgotten about his, um, um, well, about him uh, saying that they had the wedding cake. Well, she hasn't caught the straw hats yet. Well, true. She true. Has- Yet seen that they don't have it, though uh, we do see that Zeus and Prometheus got left behind. Yes, still it it would be in Paris Perro's uh, interest to kind of not catch up to the Straw Hats. 
maybe he just gets them just far enough that they're seen, but not far enough that they'd catch them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, true. Or maybe he's just blinded by revenge for losing his arm so he can't enjoy his tea anymore. Uh, well, he's got no one ready to uh, um, to take revenge for, but <laughs> yeah, uh, true. No, I really appreciate the, this chapter because Rare, rarely do we ever see the Straw Hats actually sailing. Uh, just working together as a crew to escape the island. Um, and with Jinbei taking on a new role in establishing himself a role in the crew uh, before he inevitably gets killed off. Oh my god, I just realized his words about Pedro might be foreshadowing for his own death. Don't you think I so? I really hope not. I didn't until you mentioned it, but now I hope that you're wrong. I mean, it's. Could... I look so long for Jinbei to join the crew. I mean, it could happen later down the line, but if it happens, then uh, props for Oda for, uh, for these words be uh, being very cool for foreshadowing for it. Then we also have that street brief interlude with Lola. Pudding and Sanji, which yeah, uh, chiffon, it's yeah. there. I mean, I mean, yeah, no chiffon, yeah. Uh, I like how Pound just gets ignored as Team Sanji flies away. Um, and Pudding is freaking hilarious, but I have trouble reading Sanji's reaction to her. Um, with a, he's he's still supposed to be um, smitten with her, or um, and and he's just level-headed right now because of the situation. Or um, if he's having second thoughts now that um, he's, um, well, gotten to know this part of her personality. Well, you know why I don't care? Because the next page starts one of the most awesome fights I can remember. And I'm just drawn into that. True. Luffy versus Katakuri. I don't really... And we see just Katakuri taking... Every step above Luffy. Like, they do the same thing, but Karakuri just always does it better. True. I I don't really have much to say about this, uh, except, you know, it's it's awesome. But uh, Dr. Nova um, uh, wrote his thoughts and he said, um, an awesome chapter throughout. But let's face it, this is all about the battle between Luffy and Katakuri. Uh, it is absolutely awesome. Uh, I've loved Katakuri ever since he showed up, and seeing him in action is great. I honestly don't think Luffy can win this one, which is great because, like this arc as a whole, it's setting up that there are still uh, people much stronger than Luffy out there. And um, I personally don't know about that, since at the end of Dressrosa arc, uh, Luffy stated it's about time they started going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of the Admirals. I mean, I'd like the Straw Hats to retain the underdog status for as long as it's believable, uh, as long as it's believable as much as the next guy, but I don't think that's the direction Oda is going for. So yeah, he'll. Uh, I imagine he'll have a good, difficult time, but um, I think he might actually win this one. How about you? I'm not as sure. Because remember, one of the commanders already would have beaten Luffy if not for Nami's assistance. Hmm. And from what it seems, Karakuri might be even stronger, so I think this could go either way. It is possible that Luffy finds some way to not just try to match strength or speed with Karakuri, but could also be that Karakuri does take the win here and something else is what decides that Luffy lives. Yeah, true. Really cool fight, though, and even the fact that we're having this discussion uh, is a testament of how good Oda is with stakes and tension, that we're, we're not sure who, who's, go, who's going to win. Um, like some other series, um, so, such as Food Wars, um, which... We're well, uh, moving there right away. <laughs> well, uh, now that we've got a segue, um, uh, shall we move on to that, or uh, do you want to... Um, do you want to discuss something yeah, I else think I said everything I had to say. Okay, then. So that's Food Wars, chapter 222. I... I do like this chapter. I think I enjoy 
these kind of transitional chapters, especially I like the first part of it. So I think I enjoy these transitional chapters more than the actual Shokugekis, since here we have an opportunity to enjoy more than two characters having interactions with, with each other at the same time, while we don't have to deal with annoying spectators interrupting everything. Uh, yeah, I'll agree think? that the first part of the chapter was really f good, and I like the interaction between all the people, especially between Azon and that Baker girl. I can't remember her name yet. Uh, Momo, I think. Uh, or is yeah. No, it's Momo. Momo. And <laughs> she's even like, it is not a stuffed toy. Scary Azon, who so far seems like the guy who would just say, fuck you, with some really weird face. Uh, I, but then it moves to the cooking part where I just usually tune my brains out because I don't get any of it anyway. But I do like the gag that Erina's thinking like, yes, I taught him about all that. It's my teaching that got him this far. And they're all just left referring, yeah, he was asleep all the time. Let's not tell her. I've got a question, though. Is it in character for Soma to sleep during uh, Erina's lectures? Because... Shonen protagonists, uh, as I've noticed, have this tendency to get um, Luffy-fied as the manga goes on. Uh, same kind of happened to Ichigo. But I'm, I'm not sure how Soma right now differs from Soma at the beginning. Yeah, to be honest, I never was the biggest fan of Food Wars, so I don't remember much of the early parts. Yeah, tr true. I, gu I guess I'll um, I'll have to uh, ask Jonah, but, but then again, he doesn't like Soma. So, <laughs> uh, um, speaking of uh, speaking of Jonah, he said um, an okay chapter overall, but it doesn't have a lot of substance if you're not into food explanations. Uh, the revelation about headmaster handpicking every student is unintentionally hilarious when you consider that there were people in the, that generation. Uh, of students uh, who were expelled in the training camp for having really, really bad cologne. Uh, you got to assume that the pickings um, um, became pretty, you know, after the first um, 20 or so people. Uh, Let's see, I'll get uh, Soma, Alice, uh, Kurokiba, and um, Phil. Phil seems cool. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Bo Bob, Terry, and you know what, everyone, everyone gets in. I I'm going to bed. Well, we're going to have to see what this means. I mean, it does sound interesting, but you do make a good point that a lot of these guys did get expelled. Or maybe it was like, he ex it shows these guys will get passed. Okay, these guys, we're not even going to try and teach them. We already decided they're going to be expelled. We'll just need a reason. Uh, hey, you got Galon today. You're fired. <laughs> and... Uh, Oh, you did not watch both ways before crossing the street. That's poor conduct that gives our academy bad rep or something. Yeah, you go too. Um, I'm you, not uh, I think you were using a microaggression. That's what I read on the internet. Anyway, you're expelled. Uh, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure how to feel exactly about this reveal, although I, fa I find it interesting um, that we're getting this just before... Um, just before Megami's fight. Um, because, because she didn't do so well at the beginning, but um, but I'm uh, I'm kind of starting to um, wonder what it would mean if um, if she um, if she had her talent um, noticed as, as well before before enrolling into uh, into Totsuki. This could be interesting. All, all yeah, but like I said, I'm gonna have to wait and see with this one. Yeah, and th and then again, it uh, it could also um, it, it could also mean that uh, uh, kind of uh, the characters don't have to prove that the special in in their own right, but but. Um, from the beginning, uh, from the beginning, uh, it was clear that that they uh, were supposed to be special. Well, um, like I said, I didn't really pay that much attention since I'm not the biggest fan of Food Wars. Yeah, uh, Black Clover then. Yeah, 
because we don't have My Hero Academia this week. Yeah, um, unfortunately... Get better soon, Horikoshi. Yeah, get better soon. No, unfortunately, it's on hiatus, but um, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's it's alright. Uh, uh, we need a breather from uh, from all these awesome Lemillion moments. Well, except from Casta, but uh, so not sure about this chapter. On one hand, we actually have some uh, interesting action, a, a jewel of space magic that requires some thought and trickery, and not just Asta slashing his way through everything. But on the other hand, we've just had this uh, arc. Um, of the major character going against the rival sibling. And we've just had this with Noel of all people. And the, the, this um, and Finrul's arc seems to be more interesting. Uh, but on the other hand, Tabata, why would you have the more interesting arc be for a side character than for a female lead? It could turn out to be an interesting parallel if uh, Finrul loses while Noel wins. But I'll have to see where it goes. Yeah, here, I'm actually not sure if they are gonna win, but I'll agree, this is so far done way better than Noel. Since, for one, Finral is much more believable and not just like, Oh god, you suck! Let me punch you! No one will care! Now I'm gonna break your toys! Fuck you! Here it's just like, yeah, the other one was better, so everyone favored the younger brother true uh, al although it doesn't change the th fact that we've just had the same thing <laughs> and um... yeah except done worse so hey if you do the same thing but actually good i'm not gonna mind true. besides oh, it yes. does kind of make sense how the the plan to fight because we knew that if that space chill magic attack hits it's just gonna be game over you can't block it except that well Glide to spatial magics. And they do ma say that they tested it out rather than just hope that it's the case. It, so, is it something that, the, sure. that appeared in the previous chapter? Or? No, but they do mention that they tried with one of Finral's teammates. Oh, okay. Apparently um, his magic also has some spatial qualities or something. Oh, okay. Or, or maybe... Uh, is it specified that in Black Clover you can only learn magic from uh, from one type? So far, the magic system is so poorly defined that I've just not tried to get it properly. True. But also, although it's getting better in uh, in this arc, um, I'm going to say. Yeah, but also, we do see that the training that we had earlier paid off. Since that one guy uses mana skin, as it was shown in the last arc. Okay. If Not to mention... I kind of love the reaction that Finral's attack gets. It's... I do ponder if it's a little too powerful if it's homing, or is it just that that it wouldn't have homing as much, but that one guy tried to block it rather than dodge it, which he might have been able to do. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I love Yami's reaction to it. Just shitting there, taking the shit, and someone breaks into your room. You probably want to kill them too. <laughs> Yeah, and um, yeah, that's kind of the point. That um, uh, what was the name of that jobber? I uh, I can't remember. Well, uh, any anyway, the the jobber that that always uh, bullies Asta and uh, and so forth. Uh, um, the the point the point was that um, uh, it it looked weak, um, and it was supposed to uh, kind of look weak and. Um, he was just going to shield against it, but but he didn't accept. Uh, um, he didn't expect it to be um, a non-attack magic. So uh, th th this was a kind of cool resolution. Uh, onto so that's the guy that's been always shitting on Asta, even yeah. in the entry exams. Yeah. Okay, I just didn't know because I just can't remember this guy. He appears so infrequently, and his design is really not memorable at all. Yeah, I. Everyone kind of looks the same in uh, in Black Clover mostly, so it's it's just because everyone has to have light hair. That's the thing. Uh, if if there was more hair variation, then I wouldn't mind it. Even uh, World Trigger, uh, World Trigger does fine with um, very similar very similar designs, uh, but but um, this is just the hair thing for me. 
Uh, However, good. the ending... Yeah? Yep. Yeah. yeah, the ending is pretty intriguing, since Aston says that he has felt this kind of thing before when Langris uses that... I don't know what magic it is, but he makes a lot of orbs. Demon magic, I think. I, I think I possibly. Think, I think that this is supposed to be uh, just that um, he recognizes it from um, his own magic, or uh, well, I don't. I don't know. Or, may, or maybe it's uh, kind of similar to Licht. Uh, well, there is one interesting thing at the beginning of the chapter that might relate to it. The woman says that you are not my child to Finral. So, are these two from different mothers or? Is it just metaphorical, like, I have no child, as I'm this good one? Well, uh, well, if it's supposed to appear to be metaphorical, th uh, uh, then it could be kind of cool, but... Uh, and, uh, and then it turns out to be literal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I liked Black Ch Clover, because it didn't use Asta, who is every shonen ever, and it didn't use Yuno, who I want to die. Uh, yeah. Also, it's it's funny that we've mentioned uh, World Trigger uh, since uh, in almost every panel, um, Finral has a sweat drop, just like Osama. <laughs> uh, yeah. What did you think? Uh... What did you think about uh, about the um, uh, uh, about the character that uh, get, uh, gets introduced, uh, F uh, Finral's uh, love interest? Oh in well. Family? Not really much to say since she had two, yeah, two panels in which she spoke. Oh wait, three since she's not in one of them, so can't form much of an opinion yet. Uh, yeah, so uh, al although is this is this someone that has already appeared in the story, or um, in a flashback? Well, or? well. Langris did at one point say, like, she would be sad. And I'm assuming this is whom he referred to. Okay. Yeah. So, we knew that there was someone very close to Finral, but this is the first time we see her in person. Okay, I, um, I'm just looking forward to uh, to see how how this relates to, you know, um, um, how this relates to him being a Casanova wannabe. Uh, so, D Dr. Nova, Dr. Nova, um, uh, what he said about this chapter was that he liked us a lot. Uh, the, si the sibling rivalry, the backstory, the talk of disgracing one's family, it almost feels uh, Game of Thrones-like in a way. Uh, I think the uh, action strategy is cool, and the final page is terrifying. Uh, filled with dread at uh, what this guy is going to do. And I agree with uh, Nova that Black Clover needs to be more like Game of Thrones, as it's kill off its main character very soon. <laughs> uh, who was the main character of Game of Thrones? Uh, I never figured that out. Well, uh, um, I, uh, I, th I think at the very beginning still it, uh, it was supposed to be... Um, uh, it was supposed to be Ned Stark, uh, or, or at least he was to be supposed to be the decoy protagonist. So if if the same thing happens to uh, Black Clover, <laughs> I will be very very happy. You know, if they do have a wedding chapter where they kill both Asta and you know, I think my opinion of this series would improve a hundredfold. S Though. If they fuck up this bout like they did with Noel, I will have both a scream, which I, I won't even try to hide, and a written rant about that chapter. Wow. That's a promise. Okay, then, uh, uh, guys, hold on to it. Okay, then, so shall we move on to the Promised Neverland? Let's. So, it turns out that Monsieur Thenardier's monitors weren't just for watching friends, but for spying on plantations as well. Uh, so, what do, you, what do you think about this reveal? Well, I do think that they would have needed some kind of monitoring equipment if it was run by Minerva at some point. Yeah. Though I do wonder, where exactly do they connect? Like, is there some insider at the plantations who puts them there, or... Does he hide those cameras? 
or, or maybe or maybe this was uh, or maybe this bunker used to be part of the uh, part of the whole organization as well uh, I don't know it uh, it's, it would be pretty convenient but uh, it would have been a good explanation uh, so <sighs> so right um, mainly yeah, we also get to know that yeah you go on the thing that we gather from this chapter is that uh, uh, all the kids apart from Emma and Ray um, are going to be left behind um, in the bunker, uh, while Emma, Ray, and um, and the man, uh, that man, uh, are going to search for uh, search for William Minerva. Uh, I'm gonna call him Billy Bob. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna go call him Billy Bob. Uh, I'm I'm still gonna. Uh, why? <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like a nice name. This guy seems nice. Uh, I mean, look, he even brought a knife so he could cut up some apples for the kids. Billy B. Thenardier. S sounds good. Uh, I'm. Um, I'm just. Um, I'm. I'm just uh, convinced that uh, this whole bunker is an inn. So yeah, uh, in which the raping Santa. <laughs> um, so. Um, once again, Ray is doing fucking everything in this manga. I, I really wish the, um, the series would give the other kids something else to do, uh, some kind of development, because I've got a feeling I won't be able to properly enjoy this series until it spends, it's, uh, it spread its, its focus a little. Right now, is uh, everyone is just there to ask, ooh, what's that? And, um, either Ray or Emma answers. Yeah, I kind of have to agree with that. I mean, even back at the house, Don and Gilda still had some agency and their own personalities. Yeah. And now it seems like they've just joined the other kids a little. Yeah. It's like the casting is too focused. Uh, I mean, it makes sense why only the two of them go, but still, I'd like to have some wider cast. Yeah, maybe, maybe have a... Uh... Well, we we could have a, a good split up if uh, we had maybe uh, Ray and um, Ray and Gilda going with uh, uh, with uh, Billy Bob to uh, and uh, and Emma staying behind with Don uh, and an opportunity for for some different character interactions than uh, than what we usually get uh, because in a vacuum we we haven't really seen how they would interact, but. But no, it's uh, again, again, we... still Emma, and, still Emma and Ray, still, still yeah. this thing. Then again, we don't know how long this excursion will last. Mm. So, question: What do you think? What, do Billy will Billy Bob agree to any kind of alliance? Since he seems to have come with a knife. No, I mean, I assume it's for cutting for apples, but something in me tells me he might have a little sinister intention in some very minor chances. I I will treat it like every freaking cliffhanger in Promise Neverland. <laughs> like, the, uh, like the freaking one when uh, uh, Mom approached... Uh, when Isabella approached uh, Sister Crone uh, with a knife behind, behind her back. I, I won't... <laughs> I won't treat it as anything else, but, but just a cliffhanger for the sake of it. Well, that was a mid-chapter, so I'm not sure that counts. Um, so, Dr. Nova said, I think it's a drag that the plan is to leave the, kids, uh, the rest of the kids behind, since I would have preferred that the other kids stayed around and were fleshed out as characters. But if they're going to go in this direction, making the cast smaller might be a good move. Not sure when that terrifying writing room is going to get brought up again. Uh, feel like it really should. Does it mean? Well, th does it mean the uh, the room where where things are written on walls? Or I'm pretty sure he does. Okay. And I assume they're gonna address that before they leave, because they're gonna have to talk to this guy and somehow convince him not to stab them all. I mean, stab the apples that he will peel for them. Yeah, Billy Bob did nothing wrong. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, 
I'll have to also have to see where this goes because uh, because yeah, uh, I agree with Nova that that um, maybe leaving the if you have to go with uh, Emma and Ray, that, then then sure, Le leave all the other kids behind. But because otherwise, they're just going to be the uh, Shokugeki spectators. Um, if if you don't plan to do anything else with them, but uh, yeah, I'll I'll have to see whether what this goes really. So um, we can't. Doctor Stone, Doctor Stone, Doctor Stone, Doctor Stone. So um, just be before we move on to Doctor Stone, uh, to to the uh, most brilliant chapter this week. Uh, I'm I'm just just gonna mention what Doctor Nova said uh, about we never learn. We still can't read it, but uh, we can guess what the chapter was about uh, from his words. Uh, I found the chapter uh, relatively charming. I like this new character, and though I hate uh, uh, the "Hey you, pretend to be my boyfriend" trope, I think it worked okay, and I like the the, the story they're telling there. Uh, this seems like an actual character, not just another stereotypical girl to add to the series. So either a, either a new girl is introduced uh, altogether, or we still have a development chapter from uh, from the um, lowly upper cr upper classman uh, Tsundere we we got last week. So I'm, indeed, I'm curious. So, uh, Dr. Stone? Dr. Stone, Dr. Stone, Dr. Stone. Yep, yeah, um, go on then. Well, Suika best girl. She, yeah. she is adorable. Uh, she, oh. This manga is so good at introducing and developing characters so quickly. Uh, Kinro and Ginro are, are a bit like, uh, well, uh, to put it in, a, um, in an eye shield analogy, a bit like the Ha Ha brothers, since they've been here for a while, and they're now only getting some development after being comic relief for a while. But uh, I love it. No, I, I, I do I... think that only only Kinro. It's like with the Ha Ha brothers. Only Jumanji gets development. The other two are just kind of there for comic relief. Well, maybe we have something else with Ginro. But uh, I love every uh, everything about uh, Suika's big moment, Kinro's determination and stubbornness in. Uh, in his refusal to uh, to tell people about his uh, uh, the, the troubles with his eyesight, I uh, I can't wait to see it pay off. It, it, th this was such a brilliant chapter. Yeah, I was doubting that the glasses would be the uh, answer, but yeah. that's just because I didn't know how difficult it would be to create lenses that correct one's vision. Uh, although it um, it is weird because in one in one panel uh, I think. Uh, He's testing. Uh, he's testing Suika's eyesight uh, uh, through one eyeglass, and uh, and then I'm just wondering. Okay, did she forget entirely uh, how that lens worked uh, before? Um... Well, I mean, he was just showing her simple geometric shapes, okay. not like a field of sunflowers with her dog there. Well, he, he would he would have to, uh, he would have to have been very careful about not showing her any anything else but uh, but uh, geometry. <laughs> I imagine. But but yeah, uh, this uh, this is well, a really I mean... magical moment and I I don't care. I don't care if it's inconsistent um, uh, uh, even if even if I was sure it's inconsistent, I wouldn't care. This is such a brilliant moment. And it's really not, because Senku was the one holding the lens, so even if he turned her head to look somewhere else, she'd not see yeah. anything. Hmm. Lens would still be there, pointing at the geometric shapes. Yeah, I guess you're right. <sighs> yeah, of course I am, because this series is awesome. So uh, I so just so love the two-page spread of them. Yeah, seeing that reaction of Suika, and Suika is adorable, whether in mask or outside it. Coincidentally, or uh, th this is what Doctor Nova also says. Suika is adorable, and I love the revelation of her needing glasses. Not only does it result in an amazingly heart uh, heartwarming moment when she's finally <laughs> able to see properly for the first time in her life, uh, something that hits me just as hard as intended, I assume. 
but it shows that Senku do really does care about the people around him. Instead of just going to uh, right to creating glass beakers, he took the time and effort to do something for the sake of improving the light life of a little girl. Uh, chapters like these remind me of why I love Dr. So and so much, and why I can't wait for the volumes to come out. So, yeah, I I completely agree with yeah. that. It, it's a really well, good point on Senku. Yeah, I'm not sure on Senku since one of his lines is now the kingdom's labor force has powered up. Well, it's hard to tell whether he does this altruistically or he's just doing it because now we got more use out of Suika and if anyone else has bad eyesight, we get use out of them. Well, he just says that he really loves them. With Senku, I honestly cannot tell. It's like Hiruma, except we haven't had the hundreds of chapters of development that show that he does care. <sighs> yeah. So, shall we finish things up? Yeah, I just want to gush a little more about chapter, and especially Kinro. Like, last few chapters have made me really like this guy. With his dedication, his attitude, and how he's willing to go through so much just to help someone. True. He, uh... But I do wonder wh how they resolve this. Like, even if they find out, would Kinro turn down the glasses? And how powerful is he if it's gl if he does get glasses? Yeah, the, we d we didn't we haven't really um, until now we haven't really gotten this uh, kind of uh, character that centered on pride. Um, th that that is also. Uh, used for comic relief as as a comic uh, as the comically serious side and uh, and he um, and now I really see that uh, really apart from the comic duo uh, he also really does fe uh, fit through this dynamic of um, mm, um, uh, of all these characters the straight man yeah. Uh, the comic well, series. I, I wouldn't call him the straight yeah. man, but uh, yeah, yeah, maybe not straight man, but yeah. Aside the chapter twenty four where he lost his spear to lightning, he's always been the serious one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's. Uh, and also, one last note: Do you think at some point we'll get Suika in glasses rather than that helmet? Uh, I hope not, but because because this this is a really um, a really iconic thing uh, I could imagine. So, so uh, I hope we see see her very rarely without uh, without the glasses. But but I th I think that uh, I think that uh, Kinro is going to look uh, um, is going to look look dr dope in glasses. So I can't wait to see him like that. I just would like to see Suika in regular glasses and see how adorable she would be. Uh, uh, I, uh, I, I prefer th this way so since uh, uh, she, she's still adorable. She's still cute, but not, excessi uh, not excessively so. Uh, by the way, Grail, does this mean that your Moe gl gland has also awakened? And that's my... No comment. <laughs> Oh, no, uh, one little, little note. <laughs> one when they're ta when Senku talk about glasses, does that blonde haired girl actually kind of look like what Suika might look like grown up a little? Uh, let me see. And oh. actually, now that I think about it, on the right, that also does a li look a little like Kinro. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, t yeah, true. <laughs> uh, what are the other what are the other two characters? Are, are they a reference to something? I don't know, and especially with that army guy, it's hard to tell since we only see a little bit of his face. Uh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, it really does look like Kinro. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Oh. Final note, that cover page is pretty fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. Milo also gushed over it um, on Twitter, so, so yeah, it, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I hope, 
I hope every t- every time we we see Suiko without the glasses, she she has this face. And n- n- now that I see it, <laughs> you mean the wrinkly face or the regular one? Uh, the wrinkly face, uh, the old crone. Yeah, I'm gonna see that in my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, shall we finish things up? Yeah, let's. Wow, uh, this is really gonna be a short episode, guys. Uh, I think that, I think this is gonna be uh, I think this is gonna be shorter than the uh, uh, cross account special. So uh, that is gonna do it for this week of Samusry. Uh, thank you all for watching, either on my YouTube channel or live at twitchtv slash Cheddar. Uh, we're still trying to establish a weekly uh, schedule for this semester so, so, since. Um, uh, things are rather hectic for me at the moment, um, and uh, for most of the other guys since they couldn't make it. Uh, but uh, we'll get back to you when it's established. And um, in the mean, in the meantime, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Winsley Cheddar for updates on the stream on Penganta, World Triggered, Friendly Faces Everywhere, Ify Reviews, and many many other projects. Uh, follow Milo at Hoven with an H uh, for anime waifus, Cabal hijinks, Cabal cast, which is definitely coming, guys, and Trial by Guilty Crown, I, a podcast uh, he does with with, with Caster. Um, I think I think recently the third episode ha- has come out, and uh, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I de- definitely have to. And uh, you guys also definitely have to, uh, people who are watching this. Uh, follow Grail at Nuclear Android for gaming tweets and world conquests, uh, uh, as well as uh, as well as job issues, unfortunately. Mm. Be sure to visit our One Piece RP forum, uh, One Dream Adventure Reborn, to write some lovely stories with us and talk about manga in general. Otar.comforums.com is the address. Uh, we'd we'd really love to see some new people. Um, uh, things ha. Uh, as usual, after the event, uh, things have been getting a little, well, uh, stagnant since um, uh, it's the beginning of the school year. Um, uh, ev- everyone has fatigue after the event, so uh, no wonder. Um, was was the state of the event reviews, Grail? Trying to motivate myself, but. These are just the hardest things to review since they're so insubstantial. Mm. Yeah, as uh, yeah, I, I guess so. But um, do you think the the new format of reviews is um, is um, you know uh, uh, is an advantage to it or uh, or a disadvantage rather? It's a small advantage, but. It's just like when you don't have setting or any other character besides the main ones, there's not a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. And action just seems to be there as cool action with no connection to things. I mean, that's kind of the thing with this event, but it just doesn't make for a very interesting reviewing thing. I mean, it's like reviewing one of those old stick figure animations. You just say, fighting was cool. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. If well, if if you manage to get some character development into it, uh, though, it's um, it can be a nice challenge. Well then. Well, if that's all, I'm gonna go play more Danganronpa. Yeah. All right then. We so, will take over this podcast with Danganronpa. Sure. Sure. Uh, keep telling yourself that. Uh, I know. What will you call yourself then? Fluent stream. <laughs> Alright then, Uh, once again, cheers for watching, and we will see you next week. Take care.